anger, frustration, and growing concern in Tehran as people protested against the 200% increase in fuel prices. Many simply turned off their engines on major highways across the city to show their disappointment at the sudden decision to raise petrol prices overnight. As heavy snow blanketed the capital, people still lined up at the gas stations to fill up. This is not a wise decision considering our horrible economy and sanctions we are under. It's a cruel decision because it won't affect the wealthy people. Only the poor people will pay the price. This will 100% impact everything else. It's not just about the price of gas. All commodities will be impacted. This will only hurt low-income families. They were supposed to increase subsidies first, then raise the price of fuel. They will find another excuse to cut their subsidies later. The protests have not been limited to the capital. This was a scene in the southern city of Abadan in Khuzestan province overnight. Here, State TV announced a number of individuals it described as unknown elements fired into crowds of people, injuring some. The shock of this news has yet to sink in here. With the new prices, motorists now pay about 13 cents a litre. That's a threefold increase. The government expects to earn nearly $2.5 billion from the price increase and says that it will help millions of families in need. The first payments will be handled within the next week or 10 days and transferred to the families. The president believes that if there is going to be petrol price reform, all of the new revenue will be paid back in full to the people. But many people here fear that this decision could have far-reaching consequences. It stems from a number of issues. While Iran has huge energy reserves, its refining capability is limited, and that makes it difficult to get fuel to the pumps. The government is also fighting fuel smuggling to neighboring countries. That's because Iran has some of the cheapest prices in the world due to its heavy subsidies and a weak currency. The economy here has been struggling for years, but since the United States withdrew from the 2015 nuclear deal last year and reimposed a series of new sanctions on Iran, things have been getting much worse. Inflation is just over 40 percent, with unemployment rates at over 14 percent. Officials here say that this fuel price increase will help people, but it's proving very difficult to convince ordinary Iranians. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera, Tehran. Let's discuss this further now. Hamid Mosavi is a professor of political science at Tehran University. He joins us live from the Iranian capital. Professor, nice of you to be with us. I wonder if you could first just give us a sense of how this is going to impact on ordinary people in Iran who have already seen their economy decline by over 9% and are already battling increased inflation as well. Well, I mean, it's a very complicated situation. On the one hand, the Iranian government up to now has been paying huge subsidies on fuel. And we have to understand that the Iranian government no longer has the money it used to have. I mean, the government of Rouhani is having severe budget issues and a very serious budget deficit because of dwindling Iranian oil exports due to U.S. sanctions. So from the government perspective, they actually had no choice. Now, from the other side, the other perspective, the people of Iran, especially the middle and poorer classes, they have been under economic pressure for over a year. I mean, some goods have increased by over 100 percent in the past year. And a lot of people fear that the rise in fuel prices will impact other prices as well. So, mm. again, a very complicated situation. What we're hearing, though, is that this increase in fuel prices and the rationing will then go towards subsidies for lower income people. In a sense, they're taking with one hand and giving with the other. What impact would those, would those payments have to lower income people in Iran? Would that be significant enough to, to offset the increase in fuel? So, so, so that's been the idea of the government to help the poorer classes in that way. But the problem is that if the increase in the fuel prices, if it's going to impact other prices, because, I mean, fuel is used in the production of many goods, then it, it might actually, the inflation that will come about as a result of this 
might make people worse off, especially the poorer classes. Mm. So we still don't know what kind of an impact it will actually have in the Iranian economy. And we have to also understand that it also has psychological um, repercussions. For example, the Iranian currency has lost some of its value today because mm. of this very mess. Professor Musavi, I, I want to get a, a, a thought from you on the political implications of this. Of course, there are parliamentary elections in February. What's this going to mean for President Rouhani, given that he's not just battling anger on the streets here, but, of course, the, the, the weakening economy because of the sanctions over the nuclear dispute? Um, uh, frankly, I think it will have a very devastating impact for the political fortunes of the so-called uh, moderates and the reformists who are currently running the government because it's a very unpopular decision. Also, the conservatives have used the opportunity to criticize the government, even though, again, it's very difficult to imagine what kind of alternative the Iranian government has. And nevertheless, I think we still have to wait a few days if the protests get worse there is a chance that the government might back away because that has happened in the past few years in Iran. Professor Musavi, thank you so much for giving us your time.